tiny, vibrating strands of energy occupy an infant universe. The particular ways in which these strands wiggled produced various particles. Among these first particles were quarks. The universe cooled, allowing quarks to bind into groups of three, forming baryons. These baryons also bonded, forming nucleons. Again, the universe cooled, and tiny electrons were captured into the nucleon's orbit and hydrogen first formed. Due to gravity, knots of hydrogen gas began to coalesce into large knots, eventually forming galaxies. In the outer arm of one of these galaxies, an enormous cloud of gas had formed. In pillars of this gas, new stars were being produced. In the core of one star, hydrogen fused to form helium. Later, beryllium. And ultimately, carbon. Eventually, the star burned up all its fuel. Following a supernova, the star's elements receded throughout the galaxy. Shock waves propelled a particular knot of gas into its own region of space. In time, most of the gas gravitated towards its center and ignited as a new star. Most surrounding matter was vaporized. Some heavier debris, however, remained in orbit. This debris began to gather, forming clumps. Then larger conglomerates. And eventually, planets. One of these planets endured a hostile infancy. The planet's surface was bombarded by comets and ravaged by volcanic eruptions. Volcanic steam rose up, forming clouds, then returned as liquid water and formed oceans.
Meanwhile, meteorites from the supernova penetrated the planet's atmosphere, delivering carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen into hot pools of water. The sun's energy catalyzed chemical bonds between these molecules, forming new carbon compounds. Two such compounds, hydrogen cyanide and ammonia, bonded themselves, forming adenine. Adenine linked with other nucleotides, forming RNA. Some of these RNA molecules could self-replicate. Eventually, DNA replaced RNA as a more efficient replicator. Other molecules, lipids, formed tiny bubbles. Particles inside were kept safe from external forces. Soon, DNA found a new home inside these bubbles. In time, a new inner force began to influence the sustenance of these structures. The presence of microtubules may have allowed for quantum computations to take place in these structures, making them alive. They reproduced. They metabolized food. They sensed their environment. Some cells evolved chloroplasts, making them photosynthetic. This released oxygen into the atmosphere. More advanced cells began to form colonies. In time, they could no longer function independently. They behaved entirely for the whole, and the first multicellular organism was born. nerves and muscle later evolved. These animals could now move. In flatworms, a new bilateral body plan first appeared. It evolved a head, two eyes, and a brain. In acorn worms, a heart and circulatory system evolved, and gill-like structures. In Picaia, a primitive nerve cord evolved. Conodonts evolved teeth to help with ingesting plankton. In primitive fish, like Hycoichthys, the first true backbones appeared. Protective armored plates evolved around the head and thorax. complex brain allowed, for the first time, a capacity for memory. Bones and fins first appeared. With powerful jaws, hunting soon replaced scavenging. Bones, in their fins, broadened into the first limbs. In a sea of predators, these limbs proved to be favorable. Limbs enabled an escape onto a new, safe territory. Lungs enabled them to breathe on land. 
scales retained water, keeping these land animals cool. Reptiles were now equipped to colonize the uplands. With blood and oxygen being pumped through an advanced heart, they could now travel at higher speeds. Bodies further developed. Body temperature was first regulated with the evolution of sails. Cynodonts evolved mammal-like jaws with specialized teeth. They bonded in pairs. Their new jaws created space for a middle ear to develop, heightening their awareness. One branch of cynodonts, mammals, evolved body hair for insulation and milk glands to feed their young. Their brains evolved a neocortex, an area associated with higher functions. A common genetic ancestor of mice and humans speciated. One group of mammals took to the lower branches of trees, feeding on fruit and leaves. Their claws, however, limited their adeptness in the trees. In early prosimians, grasping hands replaced claws. Forward-facing eyes gave them improved vision. Bigger brains enabled them to process complex 3D world in the trees. They stood more erect. From these prosimians evolved a new social animal. Their snouts were more narrow. They could see in color. They were more intelligent. Egyptopithecus marked a divergence of old world monkeys and apes. The common ancestor of the gibbon and human speciated. common ancestor of orangutan and human speciated. The common ancestor of the gorilla and human speciated. the common ancestor of the chimpanzee and human speciated. It evolved larynx, a precursor to speech. For millions of years, these apes thrived in Africa's Great Rift Valley. but then drought hit.
they descended from the trees and began walking in search of food. Walking on two legs had many advantages. Improved scope of vision over tall grass. They could travel longer distances. Their hands were freed up to perform other tasks. The drought continued to get worse, and they were forced into a new diet. Meat. Homo habilis was the first animal to construct tools. A diet including bone marrow fueled further brain growth. A more erect posture caused the voice box to descend in the throat. Body hair began to shred, allowing sweat glands in the skin to evolve. This enabled them to remain in the sun for longer periods. As sweating replaced panting, the mouth was freed up, allowing for primitive voices to develop. At some point, Homo erectus resisted an instinctual fear of fire and fire was first tamed. Campfires brought, for the first time, a period of leisure. A time to contemplate themselves and their world. This forward thinking marked the arrival of a new people. Homo sapiens. They were no longer scavengers, but hunters. A major drought hit, and they migrated towards the sea. The diet of shellfish spurred further brain development. Language developed, as well as art and jewellery. But the sea became too salty, and one group decided to flee Africa, across the Red Sea, up the Arabian Peninsula. A lighter complexion enabled their bodies to produce sufficient vitamin D. Right hand. All right. And the distance from your middle to the tip of your finger represents all the time since life began. That's 4,000 million years. Can anybody guess roughly where say the dinosaurs were on this scale yes yeah that's not bad it's surprisingly recent and all of historical time that's jesus and king david and the pyramids and ancient babylon the ancient egyptians all that time everything you've ever learned about in history where do you think that would come is this far away from your tip of your fingers no, or something like that? it's much no no it's much further than that why do you think I handed out those nail files? You get your nail file and get your middle finger and just do one stroke of the nail file and look at the dust that falls from your nail. 
and you might see a few grains of dust that fall from the tip of your nail. And the whole of human history has fallen in the dust from one stroke of the nail file. Has fallen in the dust from one stroke of the nail file. This is a present human being. These are us, people, complex beings. To remember two simple facts about us, in order to survive, we need food. Food is any substance or material eaten or drunk to provide nutrition or support for the body or for pleasure. It usually consists of plant or animal origin that contains essential nutrients such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins or minerals and is ingested and assimilated by an organism to produce energy, stimulate growth and maintain life. this and oxygen. The rest depends on the environment, comfort, education, evolution. So keep this in mind, we need food and oxygen in order to survive. Remember who we are.